Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanza. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 7th of December. India on alert as Omicron tally reaches 23 states step up containment measures. Ad hoc employees protest to demand regularization in Pakistan administered Kashmir. And Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai calls for stronger U.S. support of Afghan girls' education. And now for all the details. The Omicron strain of the coronavirus is spreading fast in India. Two more cases of Omicron were reported in Western Maharashtra state's capital, Mumbai, on Monday, taking the total infection in the country to 23. Amid Omicron scare, states have stepped up vaccination, testing, surveillance and containment measures. India has been recording rising cases of the new Omicron variant of COVID-19, which has been declared as a variant of concern by WHO. India's Delhi reached 23 after two more people were confirmed infected with Omicron in Western Maharashtra's capital, Mumbai, on Monday. Maharashtra state has reported the most number of Omicron cases with 10, followed by 9 in Rajasthan. Due to the rise in cases, several states have stepped up vaccination, testing, surveillance and containment measures. In Mumbai, passengers were being tested at the railway station, at the help desk and if anyone was found positive, then they were being isolated for further action. Pune district in Maharashtra reported seven cases of Omicron COVID-19 variant this week. Authorities said the situation is being closely monitored. We are actually cautious and we are... Uh uh, enhancing our surveillance, uh, we are actually uh, tracking and tracing each and every international passenger that has arrived in the state in last month or so and uh, we are testing them uh, if they are found positive then uh, every sample is sent we are sending for the whole genomic sequencing and along with that we are also tracing the contacts. Amid Omicron scare, authorities in Jammu and Kashmir territory have also taken necessary steps to contain the spread of the virus that include the constitution of free and paid quarantine services for the travellers. Earlier, Indian government tightened the travel guidelines for international passengers coming from at-risk countries where passengers have to undergo RT-PCR tests on arrival and will be required to wait for the results before leaving the airport or taking a connecting flight. Meanwhile, India reported 6,822 new cases of coronavirus in the last 24 hours, which is the lowest in 558 days. Active caseload currently stands at 95,014, which is the lowest in 554 days. Amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, India's Chief of Defence Staff, CDS General Bipin Rawat, on Tuesday warned that this may be developing into biological warfare and in such case, the nations need to be prepared to counter it. Addressing the curtain raiser event of the disaster management exercise involving beamstick member countries, CDS Rawat said it is very important for all nations to support each other. Indian Army Chief General M.M. Naravne also warned about the emergence of new variants and said this suggests that COVID-19 is far from over. The disaster management exercise is later to be conducted from December 20 to 22 in India's western Pune city and will witness participation from subject matter experts and delegates from Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, Sri Lanka and Thailand. And if this is the future warfare and that uh, biological warfare is somehow beginning to take shape, then once again I think we amongst the Bimstead nations need to act together and strengthen our effort to make sure that uh, our nations uh, do not get affected by such uh, kind of disease virus. Moving on, the charred body of Sri Lankan factory manager Priyanta, who was lynched by a mob in Pakistan for alleged blasphemy, was brought back to his home country on Monday. Representatives from the Pakistan High Commission and several Sri Lankan government officials were present as the body was brought to an airport near Colombo. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to Pakistan Mohan Vijay Vikrama said the brutal killing of the Sri Lankan national last Friday will not affect the relationship between the two countries. The lynching by a mobile factory employees who tortured and burned Priyanta has been widely condemned 
and drawn intense response from politicians from both the countries. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has assured Sri Lankan authorities of strict action, while over 100 arrests have been made so far. Mob killings over accusations of blasphemy have been frequent in Muslim-majority Pakistan, where the crime can carry that sentence. In news from Pakistan, the multi-party opposition alliance PDM has announced it will hold an anti-inflation rally on March 23 in Islamabad on Pakistan Day over the rising inflation and unemployment in the country. Reacting over the move, Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmad has termed the decision as extremely irresponsible and immoral. Promoting Pakistan Day as a day of protest, chaos and disturbance is tantamount to serving anti-state forces, he said. Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmad on Tuesday termed the decision of the Multi-Party Opposition Alliance, Pakistan Democratic Movement or PDM, to hold an anti-inflation long march on March 23 on Pakistan Day, an extremely irresponsible and immoral move. Taking to Twitter, Rashid urged the PDM chief to call off the protest and insisted to shift it to April instead. He stated that the march is not patriotic. Promoting Pakistan Day as a day of protest, chaos and disturbance is tantamount to serving anti-state forces, he said. The opposition alliance made the announcement after a meeting on Monday. PDM chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman slammed the government for its failure to control the inflation and said people from every nook and corner of the country would participate in the protest. <laughs> اور بدامنی کی صورت میں قیمتوں میں اضافی کی صورت میں اس سارے صورتحال میں پاکستان ڈیموکریٹک مومنٹ نے فیصلہ کیا ہے کہ تیس مارچ کو اسلام آباد میں مہنگائی مارچ ہوگا پورے ملک کے کونے کونے سے قوم اسلام آباد کی طرف آئے گی the Pakistan government has been grappling with a record all-time high inflation that is particularly hitting the country's poor and middle classes. According to recent report by Statistics Bureau, inflation rose to 11.5% from 9.2% in November, the highest spike in last 20 months. Moving on, scores of ad hoc government employees held a protest recently in Pakistan-administered Kashmir against the repeal of a law that earlier regularized an unspecific number of employees. The protesters said the revoking of the law has rendered several employees jobless. They want their protest will continue until they are regularized again. Scores of government employees in Pakistan-administered Kashmir held a protest recently against the repeal of a law enacted by the previous PMLN government that regularized an unspecified number of ad hoc, temporary and contractual employees in the name of humanity. The disgruntled employees claim that due to recent changes through an ordinance by Pakistan PM Imran Khan's PTI-led government, employees who were appointed after December 31, 2020, have been rendered jobless, and those appointed before that period are not being paid salaries for the past five to six months. Holding a press conference, they demanded immediate regularization based on merit and announced mass protests until their issues are not addressed. <laughs> تو ملازمین خودکشیاں کرنے پر مجبور ہو جائیں گے جس کی تمام ترجمہ داری حکومت وقت پر ہوگی ملازمین اپنے جائز مطالبے کے لیے احتجاج کے تمام آپشن استعمال کرنے کا حق محفوظ رکھتے ہیں The protesters blame that this is not the case in Pakistan where scores of employees have been regularized as per the previous legislation but the people in the illegally occupied region still do not have access to equal rights and have to face exploitation Nobel Peace Laureate Malala Yousafzai, who survived an attack by the Pakistani Taliban in 2012, met U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken during a visit to Washington on Monday. Apart from discussing gender equity in education, Malala called for stronger United States support of Afghan girls and women during the meeting. Secondary schools in Afghanistan, where the Taliban came to power for the second time, have reopened for boys only. 
U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Nobel Peace Laureate Malala Yousafzai on Monday, who pressed him to increase U.S. pressure on the Taliban to reopen schools in Afghanistan during a visit to Washington. Yousafzai, who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for the Advocacy of Girls' Education, is a native of neighboring Pakistan. When she was 15 years old, she survived being shot by a Taliban gunman. So this is the message of Afghan girls right now. And we want to see a world where all girls can have access to safe and quality education. And we hope that the U.S., together with the U.N., will take immediate actions to ensure that girls are allowed to go back to their schools as soon as possible, women are able to go back to work, and all the humanitarian assistance that is needed for education there is provided. The international community has expressed concern about women's access to education, work and facilities outside the home since the Taliban returned to power in Afghanistan in August this year. During its previous rule from 1996 to 2001, the Taliban banned women from leaving the house without a male relative and full face and head covering and girls from receiving education. More than three months after the Taliban took over the country, Older girls are still not back at school. There are no women in senior positions in the new government. In news from Bangladesh, India's Foreign Secretary Harshwadan Shringla arrived in Dhaka on Tuesday on a two-day visit to Bangladesh ahead of President Ramnath Kovin's forthcoming visit to take part in the country's 50th Victory Day celebrations from December 15 to 17. Shringla was received at the airport by his Bangladeshi counterpart Masood Bid Momin. Both leaders held meetings aimed at bolstering bilateral ties. Shringla later met Bangladesh's Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momin. During the meeting, wide-ranging and growing cooperation between two countries, including COVID cooperation, were reviewed. India's Foreign Secretary is scheduled to call on Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday. Foreign Secretary Shringla's visit to Bangladesh a day after the Maitri Diva celebrations will provide an opportunity to review the wide-ranging cooperation between the two countries, said the statement issued by India's Foreign Ministry. Maitri Divas was observed on December 6 to mark India recognizing the newly formed country Bangladesh in 1971 after liberation from Pakistan. It was celebrated on both sides of the border. In a bid to promote the forest grown produce of different tribal communities and boost their income, authorities in India's northeastern Tripura state organized a forest food festival recently. The event witnessed a display and savouring of purely organic indigenous vegetables and dishes and other edible produce. In a bid to promote the forest-grown produce of different tribal communities in India's northeastern Tripura state, forest authorities organized a forest food festival over the past weekend. The festival also aims to enhance the income of the forest dweller tribes and to showcase the purely organic vegetables and other edible produce to the mainstream markets so that they can fetch higher prices. The participating tribals prepared indigenous dishes from yam leaves, wild potatoes, wild eggplants, including the popular local dish pangoi, made of sticky rice wrapped with banana leaves. When we think of parivesh or uh, the environment, we think of uh, forest. And when we think of forest, we think of uh, the, the tribals, Janjati, and uh, also the forest food, uh, the forest vegetables, forest fruits, and uh, other such edible non-timber forest produce which are found there. So all these uh, things are very closely linked uh, because the people uh, from a tribal community, they are uh, dependent on these forest produce. Uh, forest, uh, produce. The forest authorities said they are making continuous efforts to promote the forest-grown produce so that the forest dwellers continue to harvest these crops sustainably and make proper utilization in the mainstream markets. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.